Hey Rose, it's Friday! Also, hey narwhals! Also, also, if you're not Rose or a narwhal, then I'm assuming you saw the title of this video and thought to yourself, Huh, I wonder how periods do work in space. Well that is a very interesting question with an unfortunately very boring answer because you see periods in space happen the same and are handled the same as here on Earth, but the answer isn't the interesting part. No, it's actually the question itself that is most fascinating because it gives us an example of the all too slow change in the acceptance of women in the science community over the last century. Back in the early 1900s when planes, jets, rockets, and all of aerospace engineering was really taking off, <laughs> Back then it was generally understood that it would be difficult for women to participate, you know, because of their periods. In fact, there were several plane crashes at the time where the official cause of the crash is recognized as error from female pilots who were experiencing menstruation. Even in the 60s, the Women in Space program agreed that putting a, quote, temperamental psychophysiologic human aka a woman on her period, together with a complex machine, was unwise and unsafe. Temperamental psychophysiologic human. That's hard to say. Some people at least did have health in mind. There were fears that women might experience retrograde menstruation, where the blood, instead of coming out of the vagina, could go back up into the abdomen and cause damage or even death. The only problem is that nobody ever did any research on this, and it turns out that microgravity does not cause retrograde menstruation. So, go to space, ladies. Actually, in 1971, NASA did come up with a use for women in the space program. I'm gonna read you a little something, and keep in mind, this is an official NASA government report from 1971. And I quote, the question of direct sexual release on a long-duration space mission must be considered. It is possible that a woman might be persuaded to donate her time and energies for the sake of improving crew morale. Sex slaves in space. It then goes on to say, such a situation, however, might create interpersonal tensions far more dynamic than the sexual tensions it would release. Oh man, we can't objectify women into space sex slaves after all because of all the interpersonal tensions. Dang it! Now where are we gonna put all of our semen? Ugh! Rocket scientists are really good at social issues, it turns out. Four years later, a 1975 report states that, quote, it seems inevitable that women are to be essential participants in spaceflight, even if they could only take on the less scientific parts of the space mission, or if they wished only to help colonize distant planets, their basic skills must still prepare them to perform countless new tasks. The gig's up, you guys. There's women everywhere. I guess we're just gonna have to get used to it. Luckily for us, there were very important women who were breaking ground in the aerospace field, and in 1983, just six years before I was born somehow, Sally Ride became the first American woman in space. She's still the youngest American astronaut, serving her mission when she was only 32 years old. And even though this part of her life wasn't revealed until after her death, she's the first known gay astronaut. Sally Ride, frickin' crushing the astronaut game. She once said in an interview, quote, I remember the engineers trying to decide how many tampons should fly with me on a one-week flight. They asked, is 100 the right number? To which I responded, no, that would not be the right number. So now, after having women in space for 32 years, there has never once been a complaint about dealing with menstruation in space. In fact, there may even be evidence that floating in microgravity can actually help reduce some of the cramping associated with periods. What do you know? Okay, I love science, but for it to work at its best, it needs as many great minds working on advancement as possible, regardless of sex or anything else. When it comes to attaining and spreading knowledge, the only thing that matters is what's right up here. I'm glad that we live in that world and not one where everyone's scared that women will have some vagina blood death in space. Did I just come up? with the best metal band name ever? Vagina Blood Death in Space! 
Anyway, have a great weekend, narwhals and rose. We will see you on Monday. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. If you are one of the people who clicked on this video because of the title and you don't know who Rose is or why I keep mentioning narwhals, then the only remedy is to join us and become a narwhal yourself. That's how this works. We're like vampires. How do I become a narwhal, you might ask? Well, clicking subscribe would be a good start. That way you can stay caught up on all of our new videos. And also, you can go back and binge watch all of our old videos. There's 350 of them, so good luck. You should probably like get started now. Like go, get to it. Bye.